pocket jack, that boy a menace. No pocket jack, that boy a menace. No face, he called life, cause his ass ain't well mad. No face, he called life, cause his ass ain't well mad. Sitting in my cell, jotting, plotting about my life. Then the trusty slid the note. JB just sent me a kite. He set them crackers off with him like 25 to life. He went to trial and he lost. Then that shit was worth a fight. Forever free JB till it's JB free battle. And the love I got for him, same love I got for Cracker. A closing chapter to a long, painful search for justice for the loved ones of 22 month old Aiden McClendon. The Jacksonville toddler was shot and killed in 2016 in what police say was a gang related shooting. News 4 Jax reporter Ethan Calloway was in the courtroom today as the judge handed down life sentences to his convicted killers. Both Henry Hayes and Kwame Richardson convicted of first degree murder in the death of a 22 month old boy showed little emotion as they learned their sentences. The cold reality of the streets is that a lot of the time the shooters responsible for the killings going on are just young teenagers. When you put deadly weapons into the hands of young kids, bad things are guaranteed to happen. As bad as gang violence is, there's an even worse tragedy going on in our impoverished communities. As angry teenagers with no gun training or proper aim hunt down their ops, innocent bystanders are often killed in the process. And with that in mind, I bring you the subject of today's video. The subjects of today's video are two Jacksonville shooters that accidentally killed an innocent baby while trying to gun down one of their ops. The subjects of today's video are none other than Cracker Jack and JB, and today we're going to be telling their story. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Cracker Jack, real name Henry Hayes, and JB, real name Kwame Richardson, are both from Jacksonville, Florida. They were members of a group called PCE, standing for Problem Child Entertainment. To simplify things, PCE is pretty much what members of Six Block, such as the rapper Fulio, called their group at the time. Eventually, PCE was hit with RICO charges that led to 10 of their members being incarcerated, and it's not really a thing anymore. PCE primarily beefed with two other Jacksonville sets. One of those sets was called Head First, and the other went by the name The 187 Boys. This story centers around PCE's beef with the 187 boys, and I can't tell this story without first going over the history between these two crews that eventually led to the tragic death of a baby. As I mentioned earlier, one of PCE's main enemies was the 187 boys. The 187 boys were from the east side of Jacksonville and nowadays go by the name 1200. Some famous members of the 187 boys are the rappers Spinna Benz and Wappa with the Choppa. In fact, Wappa would turn out to be one of the key figures in this story. It's believed that PCE and 187 were amicable towards one another until the fall of 2015 when a 187 member by the name of D Rose stole firearms from Cracker Jack. This incident would eventually lead to a fight that would ultimately lead to bloodshed. On November 14, 2015, a fright broke out at a Kodak Black concert between PCE members and members of the 187 Boys. It's believed that a member of the 187 Boys by the name of Suge was one of the people involved in this incident. Shortly after this incident, the bloodshed between the two groups would begin. On December 3, 2015, police were called to the scene near Franken Street after reports of gunfire. Witnesses told detectives that a dark Toyota Camry drove by the intersection once, then returned and stopped. That's when a man rolled down a rear passenger window and fired a rifle. A neighbor said she counted two bursts of shots, the second one as many as ten. Witnesses said they saw people running in several directions as the Camry fled north on Franklin. Police said they found a blood trail leading from the front of the home to the rear. On the front porch, the police found a young man shot to death. The man was identified as a member of the 187 boys by the name of Suge, real name Avery McKnight. He was only 19 years old at the time of his death. Two other men were with him during this incident and they were shot as well, however they survived their injuries. The shooters in this incident have never been caught, but there are rumors circulating across the internet that members of PCE were allegedly responsible and it is widely believed that Cracker Jack may be one of the PCE members allegedly responsible for Suge's death. 
Following the death of Suge, 187 and PCE would go back and forth shooting at each other over and over again. Three weeks after Suge's death, a memorial was held for him on Christmas Day. A member of 187 by the name of Killer Cam testified that during the memorial, several 187 members were on Facebook taunting PCE and inviting PCE members to pull up. Within 10 minutes of posting the message, PCE members drove by and a shootout ensued. No one died in the shooting, but several people were injured, including a child. The crazy thing about this shootout is that according to the paperwork, Wapa with the Chapa is believed to be the one that accidentally shot and injured the child, who was a three-year-old girl. About two weeks after this, on January 6, 2016, Cracker Jack's sister's house was shot up. Ten days after that shooting, on January 16, 2016, Killer Cam's house was shot up and Cam would later go on to testify in court that Cracker Jack and JB were the ones who did it. Two weeks later, the unspeakable would happen. As I mentioned earlier, a child was shot during Suge's memorial. The mother of the child testified that at some point, she was notified that Wapa with the Chapa was the one that accidentally shot her daughter. After her daughter was released from the hospital, a PCE member by the name of Rondo allegedly inquired into killing Wapa's baby or somebody in Wapa's family in retaliation for the shooting. The woman declined the offer. Well, on January 29, 2016, Cracker Jack and JB would come after Wapa. On that day, the mother of baby Aiden, named Tamisha Brown, testified that she picked up her grandmother from work and drove to the grandmother's home on Sparing Street. Her grandmother sat in the back seat with Aiden. When Miss Brown pulled into the front yard of the house, she was greeted by her cousin, Wapa with the Chapa. Soon after, a white vehicle pulled in behind her and the occupants of that vehicle began to shoot at them. Several shots struck Miss Brown's vehicle. Miss Brown saw a darker complexioned black male with a gun in the front seat of the white vehicle wearing a mask. A young lighter complexioned black male was leaning out of the rear passenger side shooting a handgun. Miss Brown could not identify the mass shooter, but she identified Cracker Jack as the shooter in the rear passenger side. Miss Brown drove away quickly to escape the gunfire. She then realized that her 22 month old son Aiden had been shot. She immediately took him to the hospital, but tragically he would pass away from his injuries. He was only 22 months old at the time. The saddest thing about this is that he wasn't even the intended target. The intended target was Wapa with the Chapa, but sadly Aiden was killed in the crossfire. Wapa referenced this incident in one of his songs. Nigga tried to shoot me, hit a jet, boy you been a bitch. Man, fuck the out, man. I'm trying to smoke one right now. Nigga ride, nigga ride through. Trying to see what the out said. See, ain't nowhere to be found. I'm trying to smoke one of you niggas, country ass jits. The morning after the shooting, Miss Brown identified Cracker Jack in a photograph as the unmasked shooter. In February of 2016, law enforcement stopped Cracker Jack as he left a restaurant in his father's SUV. JB and three others were also in the vehicle. Law enforcement interviewed Cracker Jack about Aiden's death. Cracker Jack provided no helpful information. He was unresponsive to questions, but when asked about firearms, he stated he doesn't play with guns. Law enforcement eventually arrested Cracker Jack and JB for the murder of Aiden. During the trial, Cracker Jack and JB had no chance. Members of both PCE and 187 testified against them. Cracker Jack's own sister took the stand against him as well. Not only did Cracker Jack not wear a mask during the shooting, leading to him being easily identified, the police also tracked his phone to the scene of the crime. At the end of the trial, the jury found Cracker Jack and JB guilty of one count of first degree murder, two counts of attempted second degree murder, and one count of discharging a firearm from a vehicle. Ultimately, Cracker Jack and JB were both sentenced to life in prison. JB was only 17 years old at the time of the shooting, and Cracker Jack was only 16 years old at the time of the shooting. Three children lost their lives that day. One innocent baby lost his life for no reason due to a beef that started over some stolen guns and a fight. He never got a chance to live and experience the blessings available to us on this earth. The other two wasted their lives to the streets as teenagers, 
and will now have to spend decades behind bars reflecting on the decisions that got them there. RIP to Aiden McClendon. Let me know what you guys think about the situation in the comment section and please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.